Shadar Logoth. Just the name sounds creepy. And in fact, it's one of the creepiest places in the Wheel of Time universe. But was it always that way? In today's video, we'll take a look at the history of Shadar Logoth throughout the story of the books. Join me as I break down all of the history surrounding Shadar Logoth. <laughs> Now before we take the deep dive into Shadar Logoth, go ahead and smash that like button as it helps with the YouTube algorithm and whatnot. Also, while you're at it, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. I make Wheel of Time content exclusively here, and with the TV show approaching, I'm gonna be making content about the books and the TV show. So if you wanna see both, make sure to subscribe. Also, big thank you to the video sponsor, Skillshare, but more on them in just a bit. Let's hit the spoiler warning. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red with major spoilers running all the way through Crossroads of Twilight. If you have not finished the 10th book of the series, watch this video at your own risk. You have been warned. The ruined city that would eventually become Shadar Logoth was once the capital of a great nation called Arid Hall. Now all of this came from the ashes of the breaking of the world. At the end of the Age of Legends, the War of Power was fought and it put the forces of the Light, led by Luz Theron and Telamon, against the forces of the Dark One and his minions. In a last ditch effort to save humankind, Luz Theron and Telamon led an assault on Sheol Ghul with the Hundred Companions and managed to seal away the Dark One and 13 of the most powerful Forsaken. Now without their leadership, the forces of the Shadow eventually fell, but it came at great cost. The Dark One tainted Sidene, the male half of the true source, and all of the male channelers of the world eventually went insane. This began a period of destruction as male channelers destroyed cities, changed landscapes, and essentially destroyed all parts of civilization. It is thought that this period, which would be called the breaking of the world, would last up to 350 years. At the end of that breaking though, when the last male Aes Sedai were dying out, the peoples of the world were left to rebuild civilization. In this period of time in the Westlands, fledgling city-states began to spring up that would eventually become empires. One such city-state was called Arid Hall, and it sat on the north bank of the river Arenel. The nation would grow and consolidate power around Arid Hall, and the nation would share its name, obviously, and become Arid Hall too, so capital Arid Hall, nation Arid Hall, and it would spread to cover a massive area that bordered the nations of Jaramide, Safer, Coromanda, Aramella, and most importantly, Manetherin. The city of Arid Hall was actually located very close with the border of Manetherin. The nation would grow wealthy and powerful due to its location along major river trade routes, as well as the mountains and all of the raw material that could be mined. The Ogier would build Arid Hall using their master craftsmanship to create basically a wonder of the world. In fact, the Ogier would build two other cities in Arid Hall, showing the wealth and power of the nation. Those cities would be called Amor Messine and Sirenda Marnella. These cities would have the Ogier groves built along with them, as well as Waygates, as were customary with Ogier built cities. The nation would continue to grow and prosper until around 209 after breaking when the political structure of the entire world would change. In 209 AB, the 10 nations of the world would come together at a conference and establish the Compact of Nations. There were still threats of dark friends and millions of shadow spawn in the blight that were a constant threat to the world. It was feared that the nations would end up fighting each other and be overwhelmed by the shadow. Also at this point in time, the memories and at least some of the structures of the Age of the Legends were still around. Despite that, none of the fledgling nations wanted to give up their sovereignty to another nation. And so a compromise was struck and the Compact of the Ten Nations was created. Under the Compact, the Ten Nations would remain sovereign. However, they would have a treaty binding them together for mutual defense. The nations were Elgar, Almoran, Aramella, Coromanda, Aheron, Asenia, Jaramide, Manetherin, Safer, and of course, Arid Hall. With the Compact in place and the nation still growing, Civilization began to advance and cities like Arid Hall grew to massive metropolises, dwarfing the size of many of the cities in the modern Wheel of Time story. There was continental trade, exchange of ideas, and the growth of science and experimentation with the One Power. The White Tower was founded around this time, and the general thought was is that the Age of Legends might come again. However, all of that would come to an end in roughly 1000 AB.
Roughly 800 years after the signing of the Compact of Nations, the very thing the Compact had been created for happened. Millions upon millions of Trollocs and other shadow spawn poured out of the Blight and overran the Borderland nations. The entire continent was plunged into war, and this event became known as the Trolloc Wars. For the first 150 years of the war, Arid Hall and its forces valiantly defended their own nation and the other nations of the world that came under attack. They had an especially close alliance with their neighbor to the south, Manetherin. Manetherin had the most powerful military in the world at the time, and being so close lended a degree of safety and security to the city of Arid Hall and the nation as a whole. However, as the war raged on, the compact seemed to be failing. Some nations were completely overrun, and others would not help their neighbors, other than Manetherin, who was helping everyone. Most were content to simply try and protect their own borders, and not try to venture out to save other nations and leave their own capitals undefended. In roughly 1150 AB, King Balwin Mael of Eridhal began to worry that the Light might not actually win the war. His despair became so great that the will to fight began to falter. It was at this time a mysterious man named Mordeth arrived in the city and quickly gained the trust of the king. Mordeth advocated for a ruthless strategy for victory, advising that people needed to become harder and do what it took to win. Through this method, they became ruthless and cruel, all in the name of victory for the light. Under Mordeth's guidance, the city turned in upon itself. They shut the gates to outsiders and they became mistrusting of all. During this time, sensing that his ally, King Mael of Arid Hall, was in despair, King Thorin Al Torin Alban of Manetherin sent a delegation to Arid Hall led by his son, Prince Carr. The intention behind the delegation was to bolster Arid Hall's spirits and resolve for the fight to come. But under the advisement of Mordeth, King Mael had Prince Carr imprisoned and the rest of the delegation from Manetherin murdered. They then tortured Prince Carr until he eventually was able to escape back to Manetherin. However, this was the end of Eridol. Before moving on though, let's give a quick thanks to Skillshare. Skillshare is a massive online learning community that offers thousands and thousands of professional courses set up for you to learn something new from your home. You don't need crazy expensive college classes and you can learn pretty much anything. I've been a long time user of Skillshare and I've learned a lot of what I know about a lot of stuff from Skillshare. <laughs> it's super cheap also, which gives it a crazy value in my opinion. If you aren't sure if you'd like it, you can try it for free. Click the link in the description of the video to try a free month of Skillshare Premium and see how you like the service. I think that you're gonna find it worth it. And like I said, it's incredibly cheap even without the free month. Make sure to check it out and let's get back to the video. When Prince Carr arrived back in Manetherin, he told King Thorin about his imprisonment and torture and the murder of the delegation. Of course, the king was furious and he led an army into Arid Hall to bring the city of Arid Hall to justice. However, when they arrived, they found the city completely empty. In the time between Prince Carr escaping the city and the time that King Thorin led the army to Arid Hall's gates, the paranoia and mistrust in the city became so great that one night, Everyone in the city killed each other. Women, children, all of the men, armies, civilians, doesn't matter. The entire population was consumed, and later it would become the entity known as Mashadar. The army of Manetherin felt such great evil coming from the city that they renamed it Shadar Logoth, which meant place where the shadow waits in the old tongue. The nation of Arid Hall would fall shortly after the capital and the entire nation became overrun with shadow spawn as they staged invasions of other nations from the fallen land of Arid Hall itself. One time though, late in the war, a massive shadow spawn army decided to camp in the relative safety of the untouched walls of Arid Hall. The next day, none of the shadow spawn emerged from the city, not one. Scouts from the armies of men that were meant to engage with the Trolloc army approached the city and entered, noting that not one of the Shadowspawn was left alive. They found weapons and armor of the Shadowspawn, as well as walls streaked with blood and pleas to the Dark One to save them, written in Trolloc blood. Later, when the men returned in greater numbers, they found that even the blood and armor were gone now the city being completely empty. The evil presence in the city was named Mashadar, and it took the form of a fog that would creep from buildings and consume anything living that entered the city and stayed overnight. It's sort of unclear exactly what Mashadar is, but it appears to be the embodiment of mistrust, hatred, and maliciousness of the people of Eridhal. However, 
Mashadar was not the only survivor of the fall of Hall. Mordeth, the king's advisor, also managed to survive the deaths of everyone in the city, becoming trapped for eternity within the walls. Mordeth would roam around the city, and if anyone entered the city, he would try to possess their soul and body so that he could leave the confines of Hall. After the Trolloc Wars ended, the city of Arid Hall was avoided and isolated from the world. Despite being on a major river trading route, the area was avoided and ships wouldn't even stop anywhere near the abandoned city. Adventurers heard stories of people disappearing from Shadar Logoth and would not travel there for any reason. So, the city sat essentially undisturbed for thousands of years. Nothing grew inside the city but vines and trees gradually grew over the area surrounding the city, hiding it from view. Buildings began to crumble due to the lack of maintenance, and eventually the city became a ruin. As time passed, the river on the south bank of the city changed course, and although the city was once on the north bank of the river Arnell, it later found itself on the southern bank of the same river. It would go unvisited for a long while until the start of the main story. Shadar Logoth received its first visitors in thousands of years when Moraine and the crew of Emmonsfielders were forced into the city by Shadowspawn forces. They took refuge inside the city, and using wards, Moraine was able to hold off Mashadar. However, while in the city, Perrin, Rand, and Matt met with Mordeth, and he attempts to get them to take treasure to the edge of the city, obviously to possess them. They refuse, but Matt does take a dagger with him that would bring the taint of the city with him after they left. Eventually, the Shadowspawn entered the city and Mashadar feasted on them, as well as separating the main group from each other. Unknown to most, though, Padon Fane, who had been seeking out Randall Thor, followed them into the city as well, where he was joined with Mashadar and Mordeth, leaving him a very changed man. He was not completely consumed, however, as he already had some corruption from the Dark One upon him, so he became sort of like a hybrid of evil um, and something very, very unique. Later, the city would come back into the story when Rand comes to Shadar Logoth to have the Waygate sealed, and Mashadar ends up taking one of the Aiel with him. He again returns to the city when Rand chases Samael into Shadar Logoth to fight him, there, Mashadar consumes and kills Samael. The final appearance of Shadar Logoth comes in Winter's Heart when Rand travels there with his party and uses the evil of the city to actually help cleanse Sidene. He actually gets the idea in the Eye of the World. The evil of Matt's dagger attracted the forces of the Shadow to them. Later, he had a combination of two different wounds that also had a similar reaction. And what he did was he used the evil of Mashadar to pull the taint off of Sidene as he used a tube of Sidar to sift it. The result was the evil of the taint and the evil of Shadar Logoth annihilating each other and destroying the city completely. In the aftermath of the cleansing of Sidene, there was nothing remaining of Shadar Logoth other than a miles long crater that the Aes Sedai believed would eventually form a large lake. That concludes the story of Shadar Logoth. What do you think? Is there anything I left out? Did you always feel creeped out by that dead city in the books? Let me know what you guys think in the comments of the video. Make sure to also, again, like the video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release more Wheel of Time content. Also check out the Patreon if you wanna support what I do and get some special perks. You can also join the channel now too. Thank you to all of you that support me and thank you for watching. And until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?